Hi guys, I am down at the allotment today and it is a roasting hot day, so I am gonna take advantage and get my zinnia out direct planted um, and possibly some sunflower. Oh, I know, I know I said I'd never do sunflower again, but bear with me and I'll explain why. For anyone that doesn't know, my name is Peggy and I'm coming into my third season of growing a cut flower garden here on my allotment in Kanagawa Prefecture, Japan, which is just south of Tokyo in USDA zone 9B. Thanks for checking out my channel. Okay, I've put my hat on because it takes me about four seconds to get sunburn. Um, so I am planting my zinnia a little earlier than I was planning to, and that is because I'm putting them in here. I'm doing that now. Um, according to my plan, which I made, I should be putting them in where my sweet pea are, but my sweet pea haven't done much yet. They're getting there, but they've not done much yet. So they're gonna need a lot longer in that spot than I was planning for them to have. And this row is going to be my zinnia and my cosmos. Now, my cosmos, I have started at home already. Um, I did a video on that for you. And uh, they are coming up. They've all germinated. They're looking great. So I'm going to have them to put in, but they can grow on at home for a little bit longer while I wait for my sweet pea to actually come up and bloom. And then I can put them in there. Zinnia, however, um, resent transplanting. They much prefer to be direct seeded. And if I can direct seed something, I'm going to do it. It saves on pots. It saves on soil. It saves on time. It saves on faffing. So these guys don't really like their roots to be um, disturbed. So they are better to be direct sown. Now, having said that, the first year I planted on this allotment I didn't get it until June so I had started everything that I wanted in at home in trays and that included my zinnia and I transplanted them and they did okay so if you're in a colder climate um, and you want to get started before the you know the soil is workable you can do it um, they grew for me uh, I think you get better results if you direct sow them but you know you can do it no bother so I have decided that instead of putting them in where my sweet pea are, I'm going to put them in where my freesia are, but they're still going in earlier than I planned because I thought I would have beautiful freesia by now, and I don't. This is my freesia. So I planted these freesia out uh, last October and they came up and they were looking beautiful. They were green, they were lush, they were full, and they looked really, really good. And then we had a really weird weather system where it was warm and everything came up um, but it was a false spring basically and then it got really really cold and these guys all died back and didn't like it and um, although they are starting to put on flowers I'm not hoping for very much now I'm going to leave these in the ground they're a bulb I'm hoping they're going to come back and do better for me next year and next year I will be giving them more protection I will be putting them in a low tunnel like I did for my snapdragon and my stock this year um, I will be putting them in a low tunnel and that will protect them from the wind, which I think is what actually caused them the most problem. Um, and I will be netting them as well to make sure that they come up nice and straight. But that's a lesson learned for next year. For this year, I don't want this to be sitting empty longer than it needs to be. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my zinnia. So I have two types of zinnia that I'm going to plant. I have a queen lime series mix. What are these? Uh, it just says queen mix it's a queen mix so two years ago my first year I grew lime zinnias uh, queen lime zinnias and I loved them they were big they were long lasting in the vase and I just really really liked the color last year I grew the queen lime orange and I liked half of them and not the other half those were they kind of came through in two very distinct colors one of them was much browner than the other and I liked that it was a really nice color um the other one didn't really float my boat so um I've just gone for the mix so that I've got some of the red the orange and the lime and a, and a kind of mix of those colors I think will look really nice the other one I went for, doesn't have a picture on the packet, but I'll put a picture up for you. This is the Zinderella um, Lilac. Now, Zinderella are, I have been told, I've never grown them before, a much smaller type of zinnia. Um, they don't get, you know, I was growing the Burnery Giants last year and they were huge. Um, these ones aren't. They are much smaller, more compact zinnia. And the Zinderella series are supposed to be the kind of cupcakey ones. Um, they're really fluffy on the top with then the kind of saucer, I guess, cup and saucer looking ones. But I've also heard that it's pretty rare to get ones looking like that. You know, you see them on the internet, but I don't know who's managing to grow them like that. I've heard a lot of the times they come up as singles. So I'm not really sure what they're going to look like. Now, that's it. 
Last year I grew like five different types of zinnia and I did a big review which I'll link below on which ones I liked and which ones I thought would be coming back but when it came to actually buying the seeds this year I I had to take my own advice and that was if you look at the five things that I learned if you don't love it don't grow it um, and I was having real trouble finding varieties that I loved now the main problem I'm having is sourcing seeds in Japan um, I can look online and right now zinnia are everywhere especially because Florette just launched their own um, ones and you know they've got the beautiful precious metals and you know they look really nice and they're really muted colors and softer colors which aren't usually my thing but i like that in a zinnia because all that i can find in japan are like primary colors you're getting school bus yellow you're getting you know the bright reds um the bright oranges and that's just not going to fit in with the other things that I have planted in my garden it's not my color scheme and so it's really hard to see things that you like online and then be not able to find them here and I didn't want to substitute in and just grow anything for the sake of having flowers because I've learned that when I do that it takes up room in the garden and I end up not using the flowers because I don't like them um so I've really scaled myself back and said I like the lime series so I'm going to give them another chance um, and I'll try the Zinderellas just because I've never grown them before and I managed to get these in a lilac colour. It was one of the few ones that came in a uh, not punch you in the face bright colour. So that's why I went with that. But I'm not going to plant that many of them um, because if I don't like them, I don't want to have a huge chunk of my garden dedicated to things that I don't like. So I'm not going to put that many in. I'm just going to do um, two rows of the lilac and I don't know maybe four rows of the, the these ones because these are a mix I don't know what colors I'm actually going to get so I don't want to put in too few seeds and then end up with all the same color so I have to kind of put in enough to make sure that I'm going to get at least one of each of the colors um, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and do and I'm going to plant them in between my freesia because I don't think these guys are coming back and they're certainly not going to take up any more room now because I am growing these um for a cut flower and I cut off them quite hard uh, I can put them a lot closer together than is suggested so on here it suggests that I put these about 30 centimeters apart and I'm not going to do that I have my little template that I made it's not perfect um but it helps <laughs> so this is a nine inch template which is about 23 ish my math teacher is cringing somewhere um about 23 centimeters and I have done it like this and I am going to plant my seeds like this so that each row will be offset from each other. Um, but I'll go ahead and show you that now and I will get started with the Zinderellas. Okay, I'm going to put the Zinderella in first because right now my anemone are here and when my anemone are done, I'm going to be putting my globe thistle in here. Um, and I don't think they get very tall or at least not hugely, massively tall. And the Zinderella are slightly shorter than my lime. Um, my queen lime series. So these ones grow between 50 and 70 centimeters and the lime ones grow, it says on the packet, to about a meter, but I know from experience they get taller than that. So um, I'll put them down that way <laughs> where the cosmos is going to be because that'll get tall as well. Um, so yeah, these ones are going in first at the front. Okay, when you're sowing your zinnia, they don't need to be too deep. They only need about five centimeters, uh, five centimeters, five millimeters of soil on top of them to germinate. But what is more important is that it's warm. These guys need to be about 20 degrees um, for their germination to get going. Now it's currently 22 degrees today and um, we're getting up to 23 tomorrow. So we are about there, um, uh, drops down to about 18 in a few days, um, but you know, not for long. So I am hoping that that will be okay. These should take about 10 days to germinate. So if I come back and after two weeks, these haven't germinated, I will go in and reseed again. Maybe I was just a bit early in doing it, um, but I'm thinking this should be okay. It's hot. Okay, so that is my zinnia in the ground. I have ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of my Cinderella and 10 of my queen lime, which is two rows of one and three rows of the other. And I think that's gonna be enough for me this year, but it does mean that I have a bit extra room because I've already said I'm not gonna grow that many cosmos because cosmos do not like my climate here. They come up quite well at the very, very beginning of summer and then it gets too hot and because they are such a kind of 
um, lacy foliage and delicate flower, they just crisp up here. I get a slight second showing in autumn, but they're much smaller flowers and they're just not great um, and certainly not great enough to justify the space that I give them in the garden. Also this year I am growing um, just a double click mix and I find that in previous years when I've grown the double mix, um, they have so many petals on them that the stems end up being quite droopy. They, they don't physically have the strength to hold up the flower that's on them. So again, I'm not putting in very many of them. Uh, it's just to have a little bit of something filler movement in them in my bouquets so that's why I'm planting them but it does mean that I've got a lot more room than I had planned here so I have decided to grow sunflower if you've been following my channel you'll know that in the first year that I was on this allotment I grew a lot of sunflower my whole first line was sunflower and I swore I would never do it again for a few reasons. I grew branching sunflower because I am lazy and I'm greedy and branching sunflower means I plant it once and I get masses of flowers from them. Uh, but the downside of that is that they're massive. These plants were almost seven foot tall and five foot two on a good day standing a wee bit on my tiptoes and so harvesting those beasts was an absolute nightmare um, I couldn't get them off the plant quick enough and I was finding it hard to decide when to cut because you had quite a few flowers on one stem and so you know if you took the one that was at the right stage you had two buds that you were sacrificing and that was my first year doing the cut flower garden and so I wasn't really comfortable in doing that yet so I ended up with a lot of flower wastage on top of that a lot of the varieties I grew um, had terrible pollen drop uh, and I ended up having beautiful vases of flowers but the pollen falling off of them just made the entire surface they were sitting on an absolute mess um, and it just got to be too much. I also found that a lot of the time probably because when I was cutting them because I couldn't decide when to cut them best uh, they didn't have a great vase life so I said that's it I'm not going to do it again. They also were so tall that they ended up shading out the complete second row of my garden and so everything in that second row pretty much failed. Um, so I said, that's it, I'm never growing sunflower again, don't like them. But now I've got this space in the garden and I want something that grows fast. So I have decided to grow sunflower again, but I've made some changes. So these are not branching sunflower, these are single sunflower, which means one seed, one sunflower. Now that's a lot more work because um, once you cut that sunflower, you then have to take it out and plant another seed. But because they are fast, now these aren't the fastest, you do get 40 day sunflowers. These ones are 50 to 60 day um, germination time and from seed to bloom. Um, so they're not the fastest and I might replace that because there's not that many seeds in here. So once these ones have gone, I might actually replace it with a faster growing sunflower if I can find them. Again, I'm restricted by the seeds that I can find. Um, but so yeah, these are single sunflower, which means they're going to grow a lot less bushy. As well as that, I specifically chose ones that are on the shorter side. So these are 100 centimetres, one metre in height, which is great. <laughs> I should be able to harvest them quickly. And because it is just one flower, one stem, as soon as that flower is um, ready to be cut, I can take the whole stem out and it's not going to overtake my garden and it overshadow too much. So... This is why I have decided to at least try sunflowers again. I have gone for um, these ones, which are a uh, sun rich. These are, it's a sun rich mix called the Soleil Museum. And this has a sun rich orange, sun rich lemon, a fresh orange and a fresh lemon. And I quite like these because all the flowers kind of look similar, but um, they have different colored centers. Some have green centers, some have brown centers. Some are smaller flowers, whereas some are bigger flowers. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of arrangements I can make with this mix. Um, and these are an F1 variety. If you're looking for sunflowers, I really recommend getting the F1 variety, which are specially bred for cut flowers and therefore have no pollen. Now, not great for the pollinators in your garden, but um, great for not causing a mess in your house when you cut these. So these are a non-pollen type. So I have a little bit of room here left between where my last sunflower, uh, my last sunflower, my last zinnia seeds went in and before my sweet pea started and I am going to plant these. Now because these are one flower, one stem, they need even less room than my zinnia. So my zinnia I was doing with a nine inch um, spacing, my sunflower only just six inch spacing so I can get a lot more of these in one row which is great for a tiny garden you can really pack them in obviously if you're growing these in the, your garden um i would recommend going for the branching variety anyway but give them a bit more space because they're going to be there longer but these um when you 
cut a sunflower you're cutting it when we call it the kind of kiss stage it's before the flowers are right open it just looks like they're coming in to give you a kiss and so they really are not going to be in here very long before I take them out which means they can handle a much smaller spacing so I'm going to go ahead and uh, do what I said I wouldn't do again plant sunflowers <laughs> So I've only put 11 of those in, but because these are one and done, um, you will have to be reseeding them all through the summer if you want them all through the summer. So these are probably going to come up within the same week, hopefully, if they all germinate. And because these are just for me at my house, I am not going to need more than 11 sunflowers. Usually, I think when you buy sunflowers, they come in five stem bunches. So 11 sunflowers, if they all come up over the space of one week, is plenty for me. But it does mean that I have to keep reseeding now. A, I don't really have the room to do that, but also I am going home. My sister is getting married. So for the first time in six years, I am heading back to Scotland, but she decided to get married in June. Not great for my garden. So there is going to be a period where I am not here and I am trying to stagger my flowers so that nothing is blooming while I'm away, but I will still have things blooming when I get back. So I will put another load of these sunflowers in just before I leave and hopefully they will be blooming when I get back. Um, so that there's nothing going to waste in the garden. But for now, 11. That'll do me. And let's see if I do better with sunflowers this year. <laughs> I hope so. And that is all from me today. If you want to follow along and see how the garden does, please remember to hit the subscribe button below. If you want to see what I do with all my cut flowers and you can look back on all of the last season of what I did with my cut flowers, you can check out my Instagram and I will put a link to that below. I'll also put a link to the other videos that I mentioned below for you as well. Whatever you are in the world, I hope it's starting to heat up and you can get some seeds in the ground yourself. If it's coming into your autumn, if you're uh, south of us, then I hope that you are enjoying the slowing of the season and hopefully getting some of those beautiful last dahlias and chrysanthemum going. Um, but that's all from me here in Japan and I will see you guys next week. Bye!